Welcome to Just a Minute. Thank you, thank you. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute waltz fades away, once more it's my pleasure to welcome our many listeners in this country and, of course, abroad, but also to welcome to the programme four exciting, talented, individual players of the game who've come together to show off their wit and their humour, display their verbal ingenuity and expertise as they try and speak on the subject that I give them, and they do that without hesitation, repetition or deviation. And those four people are seated on my right, Paul Merton and Giles Brandreth, and seated on my left, Graham Norton and Sue Perkins. Will you please welcome all four of them? Thank you. And seated beside me is Janet Staplehurst, who's going to help me keep the score, and she'll blow a whistle when the 60 seconds have elapsed. And this particular edition of Just a Minute is coming from the delightful Mermaid Theatre near the City of London, and we have a wonderful cosmopolitan audience as we begin the show this week with Graham Norton. And Graham, the subject I have in front of me is... How I prepare for bed. <laughs> They're full of anticipation of what you may say, Graham, but you have 60 seconds only, starting now. My preparation for bed involves a lot of lubrication and quite a bit of friction. <laughs> yes, my bathroom is a veritable apothecary of creams, balms, lotions, and things in bottles that cost... Uh... Jar, is your challenge? I felt there was a bit of hesitation. No, not enough <laughs> to be a real hesitation. I, I saw him standing by the cabinet. I know, choosing. no, no. If we get too sharp, Giles, we, we damage the quality there, there of the show. There was really loud... Balms was very loud. I know it was. Because <laughs> I wondered if volume could be an issue in this show, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, balm means a great... Meal. I did it there myself, listen. Yes. Balm oh. means a great... Meal. It's just one of those words you automatically say louder than other words. Yes, that's right, yes. Right. What, so, is, what, what do you call that? Um, but... <laughs> You know that thing where you suddenly say, excuse me, what time is this bus? <laughs> to get into London. You know, that sort of thing. What's that called? I, th I think it's called Tourette's. Tourette's. <laughs> I tell you what it's called. It's called vocal ejaculation. Really? <laughs> and, and he's the chairman. <laughs> Nicholas, don't look to me when you don't look at me. <laughs> Turn away. Turn I'm, away. I'm looking with disgust Turn away. at Graham, because it's Why? only Graham. <laughs> because you read something into that word was not intended. That's a perfectly normal... What, the word normal... ejaculation? Yes, it's, a... <laughs> it's in the dictionary. It means something which comes out with a... Sp <laughs> <laughs> Like oh. the end of that sentence. Yeah. Like the end of that sentence. Yeah. Let's just he's, hope the ejaculation stopped he, there. Yes. Some, yes. Martha, it's... can you bring a towel? He needs to go back to bed. Nicholas, a little earlier this evening, I, I interrupted Graham. Can you remind me what that was about? Yes, I will interrupt. <laughs> it's because you interrupted him because his ejaculation on balm was so explosive that you thought it wasn't natural. It was perfectly natural. Graham... You have an incorrect challenge. You keep the subject, how I prepare for bed, 47 seconds, starting now. My usual preparation for bed involves me walking to the bedroom and saying, Nicholas, not tonight, and <laughs> ushering him down the stairs to a taxi I pre-ordered. challenge. Nicholas, is this true? No. <laughs> is this true? It's a hell of a way to find out. <laughs> I can categorically say no, as much as I have met Graham socially, I've never been in his bedroom. Uh, he's not lying. He's not lying. So uh, it I've was a deviation. <laughs> and so, it's up four flights, I can catch him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, you have a correct challenge. You have 39 seconds on how I prepare for bed starting now. What I do is I get into the coffin consisting of earth from my own country and I walk around town late at night. It's only when the morning comes I find myself retreating into my unholy box. It's true, I am a vampire. I live on the dead. Look at Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> what a wonderful couple act it is. Here we are on Just a Minute. Being able to make these jokes and have this fun. When you look at him now, you can't help but think there's the man who used to know Caruso. Mm. And what a fantastic... <laughs> Giles Challenge. Much as I love hearing about Nicholas, we have now deviated quite away from the subject of how I prepare for bed. In fact, he's telling us how he prepares for his coffee, not how he prepares the, for bed. I think he's going into the realm of the surreal yes. and is providing from a his coffin. 
Not a bed, that's the point. High prepare for bed. Not high prepare for my night in the but coffin, but can't. high prepare for bed. But he can't go to bed. He's a vampire. He can't he's sleep. He's tortured. He has to walk the streets looking have for human the subject, blood. Because this is not appropriate. Do you Nicholas, know nothing I'll miss out on this run. Right, right. Nicholas. I've just made the decision. Nicholas, when the bed shops are open, I can't go out in daylight. <laughs> You have a, a very dubious benefit of the doubt because you were. <laughs> because yes. you he had... just so loves to hear himself being talked about. It really is heartbreaking. It, it could, I might possibly sleep in a coffin. <laughs> That's the element no, of doubt. You were, you were talking yes. in the surreal terms, so I'll allow you to keep in that surreal fantasy world of yours okay. and keep going in that vein. And if you get out of it, then you will be deviating. Okay. So, therefore. <laughs> 13 seconds on how I prepare for bed starting now. First of all, I put four pickled onions inside the mattress, because you know what they say, if a goat can eat... Uh, Graham Challenge. Now, he's deviated from his own thing. There was no mattress a minute ago, it was just lined with earth. That's right, it was earth before. I've been, you, you told me I could be surreal. <laughs> I'm sticking onions in a mattress. <laughs> Is that realistic, where you come from? <laughs> Oh, I've sticked myself oh. up completely on this one, haven't I? You right. said be yes. surreal. Of course, they're spring onions. It's that kind of mattress. Right. Oh. A bonus point to Giles, a bonus point to Graham. Paul keeps the subject, and there are nine seconds left. How I prepare for bed, starting now. Nylon sheets are absolutely dreadful on the bed, so what I prefer to do is get some beautiful 100% cotton. I hold them up to the light. What beautiful, crisp... Oh, Giles, Giles. Definition of beautiful. Yes, beautiful. Oh, yes. Just before. Yes. 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 Well, listen. And you've got in... He speaks, with... he scores. Huh? <laughs> Does it work for me? <laughs> <laughs> you've got him with half a second to go, Giles. Oh. oh. <laughs> so you've got that point for that, and half a second. How are I prepare for bed starting now? Bed socks, please. I'm British. <laughs> In this game, whoever is speaking as the whistle goes gains an extra point on this occasion with Charles Brandreth. He's now equal in the lead with Paul Merton. Both got three points at the end of that round. So it's your turn to begin. The subject is bow ties. Will you tell us something about bow ties in this game starting now? I've always been frightened of bow ties since I believed as a child it was actually pronounced boat eyes. Therefore, every time I stepped into a marine vessel, I was convinced and these huge ocular orbs were following me and possibly looking up my skirt in a Nicholas Parsons-type ejaculatory fashion. It's <laughs> meant that I'm... Uh, Giles, challenge. There was hesitation after the ejaculatory fashion. I was pausing. No, oh. no, there wasn't. There wasn't. No, no, there was a bit it too sharp, Giles. <laughs> 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 no, no, she... she... She rode the whole thing smoothly, so oh. I don't... Uh. Is this E4 suddenly? <laughs> You're so shocking, you were... Graham. <laughs> I know, we've gone beyond you, Graham, haven't we? I know, the, um... action. So, yes. So, uh, it was an incorrect challenge, Sue. You have the subject still, you have 42 seconds, bow ties starting now. Similarly, with Dickie Bow, I thought it was bow, and every time I met somebody called Richard, I would immediately jackknife to the floor, my head scraping the pavement, and move as if I was witnessing the Queen herself gliding towards me. I believe now they're a tall type of necktie. Uh, Graham Challenge. A little bit of stumbly hesitation thing. No, she's going with fluency. I'm really... <laughs> I don't think there was any stumbling there. She does go out of pace. What, what about the... Giving the necktie? <laughs> no, 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 no. She got it out of the pace. <laughs> At the pace she goes, it would be very unfair to, to, to penalise her. Let's face it, so... he's got the hots for her. <laughs> <laughs> no one can win now. Yeah. It's Sue's game. Let's hey, let me ride this oh, yes. baby yes. smoothly home. Yeah. <laughs> They're all evil. Right, uh, Sue, you still have the subject. Oh, 29 God. seconds. Bow ties starting now. Are black stringy things round somebody's neck, and oftentimes I've been called upon to wrap one round a man's neck, and sometimes. Uh, Giles Challenge. Repetition of neck. Yes, you've had too many necks. Oh, no, I think it was neek the second time. Neck, neck. Maybe it's neck. Oh, the audience enjoyed it. Give Graham another bonus point. <laughs> Giles, you had a correct Give him another challenge. point. It won't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Sue and him will still be in joint third place at the end. No, you have won before now, uh, Graham, when you've been back in the past. And um, anyway, 22 seconds are available for you, Giles, on bow ties starting now. Never trust a woman who wears ankle socks, nor a man who wears bow ties. He may well be a murderer. Um, Paul Chance. Well, there was two wears. That's right. One after the uh, other. Yes, wears socks, wears bow ties. Yes, uh, yes. 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 He may be a murderer. It's <laughs> people I, like you that run the criminal justice system in this country. <laughs> Oh, he looks a bit odd. We'll have him. <laughs> the, the whole point, it wasn't a repetition. You see, the woman was wearing ankle socks, W-E-A-R, and the man was wearing W-A-R-E. I think the phrase is, don't trust a man who wears a bow tie, not, uh, he's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our experience has been different, I think. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I was quoted in the newspapers yesterday because I often wear red socks. And then somebody says you shouldn't trust people with red socks. Mm. Mm, how true that is. <laughs> Nin <Nin-nin-nick>. neck. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, let's get on with the show, which I think will be more important. Uh, Paul, you've had a correct challenge. You have 17 seconds. Bow ties starting now. Don't trust a man who's a murderer. He may secretly wear bow ties. <laughs> This, of course, is the famous slogan that we were told in the 1960s. I remember at my comprehensive school, Tufty, coming out and explaining all the intricacies of this rather mad business. As I picture it now, that frightens... So, bow ties. Paul kept going to the whistle when gained the extra point. Uh, he's increased his lead slightly. And, Paul, it's also your turn to begin. The subject is youth clubs. Can you tell us something about youth clubs in this game starting now? I don't have too much experience of youth clubs. I popped into one when I was about 14 years old, very shyly stood against the wall, and there were other girls and boys. Uh, Giles Challenge. I did feel there was a touch of hesitation. There was a touch of hesitation. Mm, well, I was revisiting a very painful memory. <laughs> For the entertainment of the audience, but if that's not good enough, then I quit show business. <laughs> oh, God. oh, they're throwing them out all the time for their bonus points. I'm tempted, but uh, I will resist it on that occasion because I'm... Uh, uh, Giles, you had a correct challenge. You have 52 seconds. Youth clubs starting now. At my youth club, we always had a fancy dress party at Christmas, to which I went dressed as a handbag in the hope that the girls would dance round me. <laughs> we also took wonderful theatre outings, and the first time I ventured to this particular palace of pleasure was to see Sir Bernard Miles in a production of Treasure Island, in which he essayed the role of Long John Silver. The youth clubs of my particular jeunesse dorée very much consisted of coming out and dancing in a spring light way, we would hold hands in a circle, and of course it combined... Graham Challenger. We're a bit of dancing. It mm. sounds like some kind of cult, what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think he said dancing before. Didn't he dancing around the handbag? Yes, you're yes. right. Yes! My God, he's yes. got it! Yes. Well, listen, Graham, he danced around the handbag and they were dancing again. So, you've got in, Graham, with 23 seconds to go on youth clubs starting now. I prefer youth clubs to youth guns or youth knives, because you're less likely to die. <laughs> youth clubs are... Uh, Sue Challenge. Slight hesitation? Yeah, I think so, Sue, yes. 17 seconds, Sue, youth clubs starting now. Youth clubs always smell of you... There Graham was a Challenge. slight ball of something. Yeah, yes. Possibly spittle, yes. <laughs> yes. So, Graham, your challenge... Hesitation. Yes, she did hesitate in the first word. That's right. Yes. I'm consumptive. Um, no. <laughs> I gave you the benefit of the doubt last Don't time. Don't touch me fair. now, Nicholas. <laughs> How dare you? Oh, I will quickly. set the Janet on you. Oh, quickly, and can you lose and win friends in this game, your chairman? Right, uh, Graham. The subject's back with you. 15 seconds. Youth clubs starting now. My youth club was in the basement of the Methodist Church in Bandon, which could have doubled as a mushroom farm. Such was the level of dampness in that building. We would do beetle drives. Do you know what they are? I can't remember, but they were very dull. <laughs> so challenge. Sorry. Beagle drives. No, beetle drives. Oh, you said beetle. 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 I thought you said beagle, and I was, as a point of information, really. Just wanted to know how you drive a pack of beagles through a small we were damp basement. We were country folk. We made our own fun. <laughs> I wanted like, to sign up. Is it like taking cattle to Montana? That's right. They couldn't afford beagles, so they had beetles instead. So, uh, the incorrect challenge, Graham, still with you. Uh, oh, and you've only got three seconds to go. Youth clubs starting now. We would play ping pong long during the night and go crazy.
Uh, well, um, uh, uh, Graham Norton was speaking as the whistle went, and he has moved forward. He's got out of his third place. He's now in second place, only one behind our leader, Paul Merton, and he's just two ahead of equal thirds, which are now Giles Brown with the two Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> so You're all very here. close. <laughs> only two points separates any of you. Giles Brandreth, it's your turn to begin, and I'm sure this subject has been chosen especially for you. It is jumpers. <laughs> a man who's been associated in the past a lot with jumpers, but talk on the subject, 60 seconds, starting now. Michelangelo is remembered for many things, but not for his jumpers. In my case, that is the big difference between the pair of us. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I wander down the street, even though I have not worn colorful knitwear since the late 1980s, people say, oh, aren't you that idiot who wore those ridiculous <laughs> jumpers? I say, possibly I could be the person you have in mind. It is my tragedy. Bear in mind that the late Princess Diana also wore. Uh, Paul Challenge. See, mines. Yes, bear in mind, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, Prince Diana wore your jumpers. <laughs> they just looked better on her. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, you've got in with 33 seconds to go on jumpers starting now. I remember seeing a Tom Stoppard play called Jumpers at the National Theatre round about 1982. The actor Julian Glover was in it. It was a very enjoyable show all round. Jumpers, how are they different from pullovers? Well, there's a simple understanding thing that you must realise here. A jumper is indeed derived from something that you would see as perhaps a jumper-like material that it could come from, whereas a pullover is the exact opposite. That's two pullovers, that's three. <laughs> <laughs> that's three pullovers. So, Giles, your challenge first. The complete wardrobe. Uh, <laughs> but just tell me your challenge so I know you're correct. Repetition. A, of what? A pullover. That's right, yes, well, all right. You pointed me in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure that you did have a correct one. Right, uh, you have the subject again. You have seven seconds. Jumpers are starting now. Mothballs is what my house smells of. Nothing but that awful stench because in the cupboard where my jumpers are kept... <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Giles, speaking as a whistle, when gained an extra point, just in third place with Sue Perkins, only one behind Graham, and Graham's four behind... Paul, who's in the lead still, and Sue, it's your turn to begin. And the subject now is making millions. Tell us something about that. We're not far from the city, from the square mile. Millions have been made there. There's a subject. Talk on it if you can. 60 seconds, starting now. Making millions is apparently easy. You simply need green ink, some tracing paper, and more sums, many sums, and an underground <laughs> lair. <laughs> Giles, you challenge first. Some I've sums. You Too many repetition. Right yes. 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 Too many sums. Yes. Making millions, Giles, with you. 52 seconds, starting now. My great-grandfather was a confectioner specialising in cake decoration. He made millions out of hundreds of thousands. <laughs> Another of my forebears was Dr. Benjamin Brandreth, who made pills that cured everything. Uh, Sue Challenge. Made. Yes, he made. Too many maids. Oh, yes. mm. Mm. Sue's listening well, creeping up there. <laughs> 40 seconds available, making millions, Sue, starting now. A basement is useful where you can begin your counterfeiting activity. Darkness is, as usual, the cover of the criminal mind. You must make sure you bend and have one of those... Uh, Paul Challenge. Surely counterfeiting money cannot be a pursuit in you doing darkness. <laughs> if you're making braille money, uh, yes. <laughs> you, <laughs> need to, you, you need to look and see what it's like, don't you? <laughs> I don't think That's why I've not made millions. Oh. <laughs> so you can't do it in darkness. Paul, a correct challenge. You have the subject of making millions. 31 seconds starting now. How do you make five million? Start off with ten. That's how you invest in a showbiz. Oh. Uh, Giles challenged. Hesitation. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Making millions is back with you, Giles. 26 seconds starting now. I would love to make millions, but it is not likely to be a prospect for me now because of the taxation that has been imposed on us by... Uh, Graham challenged. Please, we must keep it balanced and fair. <laughs> I don't... Well, so what's the challenge? Uh, deviation from uh, BBC guidelines. <laughs> Graham, that certainly deserves a bonus point, but it wasn't a correct challenge. No? No, not within just a minute. Making Millions is still with you, Giles, and 15 seconds to go. No, 19 starting now. Every political party is guilty of denying us the opportunity to make millions. I don't look at any particular person. I know that they are all as bad as each other. They want to sap us of our desire to gather the filthy lucre together and to make... Wait a minute, Graham has challenged. This is frightening. Yes, I'm finding it frightening. There's a level of self-love. 
clothing here that I think must be stopped. <laughs> what I'm saying is we're in a large hall. There's a man ranting. Spit is flying. His hands are gesticulating. He's talking about how he paid too much taxes. It's very familiar. <laughs> There's a fine line between light entertainment and a rally. And I think we've... I think we've crossed it. So, so you've both got bonus points, okay. uh, but uh, have you got a challenge within the rules of just a minute, Graham? Because you pressed your buzzer first. He deviated from how to make millions. He was talking about how not to make millions. Yes, that's a good challenge, yes. Thought I'd try it. Seems to be working. <laughs> That was an excellent response from the audience because it was it was a bit equivocal. Oh, oh. No, a I fool think has a point. No, to, no. The idiot to, no, to be truth. fair, to be fair to Giles, he was still on the subject of making millions, even though he was saying that they don't want us to make millions or some of us do make too many millions, and he was on that. Uh, so, Giles, many of the doubt to you on the subject. Four seconds to go. You both got bonus points, and you start now. Never in the field of human conflict has so much been owed by those who have made millions. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Giles Brandreth speaking as a whistle went. Other points in that round has leapt forward, now equal with Graham Norton in second place. Just two points ahead of Sue Perkins and two points behind Paul Merton. We're moving to the final round. It's Paul Merton's turn to begin. I'm a bit nervous of this uh, subject, especially with Paul's hands, because the subject is... The chairman's best features. <laughs> I'm laying myself on the line here. 60 seconds, starting now. <laughs> <laughs> I must explain to our listeners that that round of applause and constant laughter was because Paul just looked at me and shook his head and <laughs> put on a face of disgust. He could not think of one of them. <laughs> he gets a bonus point for his reaction and his behavior and the laugh that he got for it. But Sue challenged first. And your Sue, your challenge was, of course... Oh, I've, I've forgotten. Hesitate. I'm really <laughs> And correct challenge. So, uh, Sue, you have the subject now. <laughs> With 58 seconds to go, the chairman's best features are starting now. Chairman Mao was a very beautiful man. And despite that piggy complexion and rather sallow cheeks and the beady, beady eyes... <laughs> Oh, Just giving myself up like a lamb to the slums. Repetition of BD. The BD BD, yes, right. <laughs> Paul, there are 50 seconds available still. The, ch the chairman's best. You're anticipating something, aren't you? <laughs> the chairman's best features are starting now. <laughs> oh, if only this was television. Another look, another round of applause, another big laugh. I've never known. People get so much reaction on silent radio before. <laughs> we should indulge in more silent radio, I think, after this. But Sue challenge. Paul gets a bonus for what he did. Sue, you get a point yes. for, for your I'm hoping we just can keep this up until I, I, I get into second place or something. Right. <laughs> good. The chairman's best features with you, Sue, uh, starting now. Look at Nicholas Parsons, but that's not the best bit. If you could smell the man, the feral scent that comes like a huge tornado from his armpits. It's something I can't describe. Best described as Lady Astor's knickers. <laughs> I'm, wrong. I'm wrong about I was, I was, I was going down the describey route, but she's covered herself well. What, like Lady, Lady Astor's knickers? No, no, she, well, wait, possibly them. No, she said describe and then described. Oh, right, ah, right. But so I, I listened So an incorrect badly. challenge. Uh, Sue, you still have the subject. 38 seconds still available. The chairman's best features starting now. A pelt of silvery hair, not his own, but purchased by the square meter <laughs> from a local warehouse that absolutely specializes in such bright nylon white surfaces. You can see him a mile off. That incredible face. Giles <laughs> challenged. There was just a tinge of hesitation. More than a thing. tinge. <laughs> it, was, it was looking at your head. Like so now, do you, Nicholas? No. I think she was running out of steam there because yeah. she had a guilty conscience. <laughs> you can tug my tuft any time. It wouldn't come off. <laughs> this is the audience with the most obscene minds that have <laughs> ever come across. It's most disturbing. I don't know where they've come from. 24 seconds for you, Giles, on the chairman's best feature, starting now. The chairman's best feature is his tattoo, an hilariously placed dragon rampant, poised for action somewhere that I've only seen it once, and then I had to use a torch, but it was worth... 
getting new batteries and rip. Sue challenged. Hesitation? <laughs> no. Well, there was a slight hesitation because I wasn't sure that was it was it all. It was all. Oh, it was all. Yeah. You did actually. You met your pause, did you? No, I didn't pause at all. No, I don't think you paused either. So Sue, he's her skill has the subject. <laughs> Why did you only see it once lit and the rest of the time was with a torch? That's what I want to know. We'll maybe torch. find out if he carries on. Yeah. The chairman's best feature starting Nicholas now. Nicholas has to do the care. The secret's been emerged. Uh, we're really? in a poor challenge. Oh, no. Hesitation. No, no. Hesitation, no. Hesitation. You get me? And I'd, I'd like the chance to pay proper tribute. Oh. <laughs> it wouldn't make any difference to the final result, Giles. I was simply know. trying to steal Paul's material, that's all. That's right. And Paul, you have six seconds on the chairman's best features starting now. Um, <laughs> you're working your passage hard for being asked. <laughs> three times he plays that trick. Three times he gets a laugh. Three times he gets a round of applause. Three times the chairman so generous he gives him a bonus point. And three times he says to Sue, you challenge first. Yes. Hesitation. <laughs> Hesitation, so yes. Fair back. Five seconds. The chairman's best features starting now. You could see his eyes hooded, sheaths of glass protecting him from the real world and the stairs. <laughs> Well, those instant rounds of applause there. What an amazing final round and uh, an amazing final score. They're all very, very close together. Just shows you how all, how talented, equal in talent, aren't they? But only one point was separating. First in fourth place, working up the scale, Graham Norton, then Giles Brandreth, and then Sue Perkins, who says you never come to anywhere. Else. But just two or three points behind the man with all the humorous looks that plays silent radio as no one's ever done it before. <laughs> He's out in the lead, so we say, you are the winner this week, Paul. Paul Merton. <laughs> right. It only remains me to say thank you to these four delightful players of the game. Paul Merton, Graham Norton, Sue Perkins, and Giles Brandreth. I also thank Janet Staplehurst, who's helped me with the scorekeeping and has blown her whistle when the 60 seconds elapsed. We are indebted to Ian Messiter, who created this game. We are deeply indebted to our producer, Claire Jones, and we're also indebted to this lovely audience here at the Mermaid Theatre in Puddle Dock, near Blackfriars Bridge, who have been a lovely, warm audience cheering us on their way. We've enjoyed being here. I hope you've enjoyed being here. I hope the listeners have enjoyed listening. Tune in the next time we play. Just a minute. Until then, from me, Nicholas Parsons, goodbye! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.